Latest Kansas City paper here, full text of President Grant's message to Congress. Hot off the press, folks, all about Jesse James. Hey, read all about Jesse. Yes, son, give me one of those. Sir. Me too. Yes, lady. Here, boy. I'll take one of those. Right down here, son. Hey, Bob, I don't see nothing in here about Jesse James. Keep looking, mister, on page four. Now, this must be it. In the middle of column three, Jesse James leads Grant. According to statistics, five male babies born in St. Joseph, Missouri during the past month have been christened Jesse James. During the same period, three have been christened Ulysses Grant. Glorifying an outlaw. Naming babies after him. It's an outrage. Yep, maybe so. But some folks is disposed to Jesse. Claim as how him and his kin folks got a rough deal after the war. And you think that excuses him for robbing banks? Nope, maybe not. But some folks don't figure he needs any excuse, especially when it comes to robbing some of these land grabbers that have come in here since the war getting rich off of other folks' misfortunes. I'll have you understand, sir, that banks are the very foundation of modern progress. If you run a bank, I reckon that's fine and dandy. But I still claim we was getting along first rate out here without so much such like progress. How about it, old timer? You look like you've been around here long enough to hold an opinion. Well, now I can't say about Missouri. This first time I've been back here in nine out of fifteen years. Wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for granddaughter. She argued fight me into selling out from California diggings. A digging? Do you mean a gold mine? Yep, platter. That's the first nugget took out of her. She weighs just a little mite shy of nineteen dollars and six bits. <laughs> well, a mine that size must have brought you a good price. Well, I ain't complaining. Now, right in that bag, girls. I'm afraid folks out here have an exaggerated idea about California gold mines. All the nuggets aren't as big as that one. So I thought Grandpa should sell before the mine ran out and come back to Missouri. Owning land that grows something is a lot more. Here she comes, boys. Hurry up. You're exactly right, Miss. There's nothing like a good Missouri farm for security, and I happen to know a big piece of acreage right outside of Munis that can be bought. Here's my card. I'd like to be an assistant. Thank you, Mr. Wyatt. My name's Mary Whitaker. <laughs> what happened? This is a holdup, folks. Help! Don't worry, madam. Jesse James never hurts anybody that listens to orders. Reach higher and try and touch that genuine mahogany trim. He means you too, Grandpa. Reach. If it wasn't for the presence of this young lady, I'd I know, go. I know. You'd show us how brave you are. Well, there are three more of us outside. I suppose you'd like to take care of them after mopping up on Frank and me. Never mind this. I'll take care of that. Keep them covered, Frank. Jesse, and let me shoot the car. No, no, please don't. Don't worry, lady. Leave him be. He's the only critter on this train with an ounce of spunk. Where are you from, Grandpa? California gold diggings? Yeah. How'd you do out there? I done all right. About time, too. That's 15 years. Hmm? Well... Then you won't miss that watch and chain. Just drop it right in here. That's a good boy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And you, sir? <laughs> Wyatt Brothers Bank, Samuel Wyatt, President. Much obliged, Mr. Wyatt. Maybe someday we'll do business together. Much obliged, folks. You can relax now. Good 
work, old timer. I guess Jesse James ain't so smart after all. How much you got there, mister? Oh, about $40,000. Here you are, miss. Thank you. Next time your grandfather might not be so lucky. He should put his money in the bank and carry cashier's checks. That's what I tried to tell him. Let me tell you something, mister. I don't spend no 15 years finding a gold mine and then trusting some stranger with what I get for it. And I don't want no arguing about it, another. What's the exact amount, Bob? There's $41,280. Is that what you made it? Yep, counting that what Mary paid for the house and furnishings this morning. There you are, Mr. Whitaker. Now, this book tells you exactly how much you have on deposit. Thank you, Mr. White. You've been very kind. Thank you. Tomorrow, we'll drop out and see that farmland I was telling you about. In the meantime, your money is in safe hands. That's a big load off my mind. Don't you feel better, too? I suppose so, but I don't feel like a rich man no more. Take these chances. We was heading by here anyhow and stopped by to leave a couple letters. That's better than trusting the mail. This is for you. And this one's for old man Horner. Inside's a little donation from the railroad company. Kind of makes up for the way they cheated him out of that right away. It ain't any more than right and just, Mom. Horner gave most of his light to clearing that land. Where's Dr. Samuels? He's out on a sick call. And Buster, where's he? He's been in bed long ago. I'd waken him. Only, well, you know how his father feels about. Jesse, is that you? You bet, Buster. You glad to see me? He wishes. Hello, Frank. Hello, Buster. Why don't you come to see us more often? Well, you see, we've been kind of busy. How are you getting along in school? Well, all right, I guess I'm up to long division. Do you like your teacher? Mm-hmm. And the other kids, they treat you all right? She wishes. And you know, Jesse, when we play fox and hounds, they always let me be the fox. And most of the time, they can't catch me. Why does that make them say I'm a lot like you? Well, um... I don't know. I haven't any idea. I guess you better go back to bed, Buster. Good night, now. Good night, Jesse. Good night, Frank. Good night, Buster. I guess the doc's right about him not saying too much of Frank and me. We gotta go now, Mom. Goodbye. Come on. Come from the bank. Declare war on James Brothers. Offer a huge reward. Captain Worthington, head of railroad police, on way to Missouri. Attracted by an offer of a $50,000 reward, Captain Worthington left Chicago for the scene of last night's bank robbery. If you hurry, you can get to Minnis in time to confer with him, Roy. I don't expect that a big gun like Worthington will pay much attention to a peace officer like me. And that's all right. But we can't afford to work at cross purposes with the railroads. So you'd better get together with Worthington somehow. All right, if that's orders. Not orders exactly, Roy. It's in the form of a suggestion. Our principal interest right now is in having that bank in Munis open its doors again. The only thing is, I can't figure out how Jesse hops around fast enough to do all the things they say he does. Missouri one day and Minnesota the next. Yes. I've been thinking of that, too. Well, anyway, 
here are your instructions in writing. Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Tell him to come out. We got a right to know about our money. Just a moment, please. I have some encouraging news for you. Oh, Captain. This is Captain Worthington, head of the Railroad Detective Service. He's going to take charge of everything. What about our money? That's why Captain Worthington's here. He's going to get it back for you. We're not looking to him for it, Sam. We're looking to you. Well, I'd make good your losses if I could, but I'm broke, too. Every cent that Bob and I had was in that vault. I can't help that. I want my money. Oh, oh, you got it. Every cent of it. You got to go back inside, Sam. Yes. Now, listen to me, folks. You're all my friends. I know how you feel. And I don't blame you. But as long as I'm sheriff of this county, I am to see that justice is done to each and every one of you. If it's a fact that the bank has been cleaned out, you ain't going to gain anything by messing things up. So the best thing you can do is to go back home and let Captain Worthington here get started after Jesse James. Hi there, Roy. Hi, Sheriff. What brought you up in this neck of the woods? I thought you had enough horse thieves in your part of the country to keep you busy all summer. Hung the last one a week ago, so I quit the stock raisers and hired out to the Bankers Association. They told me when I got down here to get in touch with you, Captain Worthington. Name's Rogers. Why'd they want you to see me? Well, they thought maybe we could cooperate. But this is all they gave me in the way of instructions. Call on Jesse James. Do you know where to find him? Well, I hadn't given much thought to that. Just started looking, I guess. Would you know him if you saw him? <laughs> Not without an introduction. Hmm. Neither did anybody else in this part of the state, except maybe his ma, over in the next county, and his stepdaddy, old Doc Samuels. See you right after lunch in about an hour. Come on, Finn. I have an idea that fellow's a lot smarter than he pretends to be. For instance, the sheriff's remark about horse thieves. We better team up with him then. That way we can clean up our business quicker. Our only job is getting that $50,000 reward, and that's worth waiting for. What if James does commit a few more crimes before we catch up with him? That may cause him to raise the ante. And we don't want to split with someone who calls himself Rogers. But how are we going to shake loose from him? We won't. We'll pretend to cooperate with him until we find out what he's up to, and then we'll cut in ahead of him. So it looks like the only clue we've got to go on is one of the robbers is wounded. Yep. That's what Hamlin the teller claimed. He's sure he hit one of them. Said he saw him grab the horn to keep himself in the saddle. How about uh, stepping over to the house with me and having a snack? I'm much obliged, Sheriff, but I just took on a late breakfast. So I guess I'll look around some while I'm waiting for Worthington. Maybe right out in the direction the robbers went. Can never tell what a feller's liable to stumble onto. That's right. Ma'am. But where did you come from? Well, I saw you putting up that sign, so oh, I... you want to see the house. We'll come right on in. Thanks a lot, ma'am. My name's Mary Whittaker. Pleased to meet you, uh, Miss Whittaker. Well, this is it, Mr... Rogers. How many in your family, Mr. Rogers? Only one, counting myself, uh, up to the present. Oh, in that case, I mean, if you're intending to get married, well... Wouldn't you want her to see it, too, before you made up your mind? Oh, I guess whatever would suit you would suit her, all right. Is that organ in good condition? Yes, sir. Has a lot of brand new stops you probably never saw before. I like to ride through the Echo Mountain. The Echo makes my dream come true. I say I love you, it says I love you, and I imagine I ride with you. I like to roam through the Echo Mountain, it makes me feel that you are near. I say I miss you, it says I miss you. And I keep thinking 
it's you I hear. You, who, where can you be? You, who, you answer me. I long for you, dear, from early morning until the stars begin to shine. So I'll keep riding through Echo Mountain until the moment you're really mine. Gabriel Whittaker, whatever are you up to? I'm up to getting my belongings back, that's what. I was willing to forget about my watch and chain. But when some ornery rascalian figures on skinning me out of $40,000, right there's where I start getting mad. Please, Grandpa, there's no sense to getting yourself all excited. Excited? Who's excited? That Jesse James has overreached himself, that what? And if I ever lay hands on him, I'll... Who's your friend, Mary? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Rogers, this is my grandfather. Mr. Rogers just dropped in to look at the house. You see, we had all our money in the bank Jesse James robbed. That's why Grandpa's so excited. I tell you, he ain't excited. I'm mad. And there's a heap of difference. You lost your money? Is that why you had to rent your home? Yes. We just bought it in the furniture, too. We expected to settle down here and buy farming property. And then... I let him argue find me into putting my money in the bank. Let me tell you something, young fella. Never have nothing to do with no banks. If you got any money to protect yourself, good dog. Like Whiskers here. Be a whole lot safer with him. Please, must we go into all that again? I suppose it's my fault, mostly. Grandpa never had any use for banks, but after we got caught in that train holdup and Jesse James almost got our money... Almost nothing. Whiskers hair scared him off quick. Made a grab for his nose, got his mask instead. Pulled it clean off his face. Wait a minute. You trying to tell me you were on the train that Jesse James robbed? You're darn tootin'. And that dog there unmasked him? Yes, sir. -y. You must know what he looks like. Well... Maybe not for sure, but Mary here would. Look him square in the eye. Is that a fact, miss? Would you know him if you saw him again? Well, I suppose so. Well, come along with me. You too, Grandpa. But what about the house? Don't you want to see the kitchen? Oh, I'm sorry about that, miss, but... Oh, to tell you the truth, I wasn't even looking for a place to rent. You're not? No, ma'am. But I thought you said... Aren't you going to get married, either? No, ma'am. Anyway, not that I know of. The Marian idea was yours. Oh, you. Now, listen, miss, I've got an appointment to keep, and you've got to go along to identify Jesse James. I'm what? Are you crazy? No, ma'am. I'm a peace officer. You come along. I might need you, too. If what I've got in mind works out, you won't need to rent your house. Not that I claim to be any great chucks as a detective, Captain Worthington, but it seems common sense if one of the James boys was wounded. He'd be looking up a doctor sooner or later. That sounds reasonable. And the likeliest doctor for him to think about will be his own stepfather. Well, possibly. Anyway, it wouldn't do us any harm to ride out that way and find out. Especially now that Miss Whitaker would know Jesse if she saw him anywhere. Sounds like a wild goose chase to me. But of course, if you insist, Miss Whitaker. Insist? I don't even know what he's talking about. I suppose our next move would be to walk up to the house and say we'd like to rent it. Maybe they'd have Jesse show us through the place. Good evening. Are you the doctor? Yes, ma'am. Well, my grandfather's just come down with cramps or something. That's our campfire over there. I'll be with you as soon as I get my medicine kit. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. Good night, Buster. Good night, Pop. Good night, dear. I try not to be long, but don't wait for me. Everything's all clear. Samuels is down at the camp with the Rogers. All right, let's go. They say these James boys shoot fast and straight. And if they're in that house, they'll have to pick us off before we get them located. I'll locate them before they locate us. Ever see one of these? No, what is it? One of those new naphtha torches. All I do is light the fuse and let it burn down about there. And I throw it in a window just in time to light up the whole place. We rush in and have everybody covered before they know what it's all about.
Everybody ready? Sure. Get back, Buster. Here. It wasn't supposed to explode. I. What was it? But that natural torch, I threw it in there and light up the place. And I thought, oh, let go of me. I tell you it was an accident. Well, so was this. Martha. Martha. Buster. Buster. Take it easy, Martha. Uh, Take it easy. He's burnt some, but he'll be all right. That's the man, Sand Valley, Nebraska. What do you know about him? As far as I know, Thompson's a hard-working, law-abiding citizen. He had a brother, though, called Bud. They had to send him to Leavenworth for trying to rob a post office. Is he still in Leavenworth? As I recollect, his sentence has three, four more years to run. Why? What do you make out of this? I found that in the burning house last night. Gosh almighty, Roy, you've got Jesse James' post office address. I see that postcard for you here somewhere. Uh, from down to Leavenworth. Uh, your brother Bud said he's getting along as well as could be expected. That and... oh, here it is. Uh, he says, uh, oh, uh, here's your newspaper too. Much obliged. Frank can call. I'm that much shy. Wait a minute. Maybe you'll let this make up the difference. All right. Trees full on sevens. <laughs> Hello, Mac. Hi, Jesse. Here's your chore, Frank. Want to see what's new, Jesse? Come on, Frank, we got work to do. Why? What's the matter, Jesse? A bank detective started a raid the other night. Mom and Buster have been hurt. You the sheriff? No, I'm the sheriff. Sure, it's out of town. Well, maybe you can tell me what I want to know. Where can I find that detective Roy Rogers? He's out of town, too. Left to my head of the sheriff. Happen to know where they went? No, nope, they didn't say. Sheriff, neither. Hunting Jesse James, I guess. Much obliged. You're welcome. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Say, you parcel that Worthington outfit? No, why? Well, he's been pesting me with the same brand of questions. He's afraid that Rogers will beat him to the $50,000 reward. Shoot. Who are those fellas anyway? Clear 
What do you want? There's a fellow going by the name of McDaniels live here. Maybe. Why do you want to know? Well, me and his brother was acquainted some, and he told me to look him up. Bud? I guess you're wondering where I got acquainted with him. Leavenworth? Yeah. Most folks don't put much store in ex-convicts, and that's why I thought maybe if I looked up Bud's brother, there's a... What he's trying to say is we ain't been eating regular. All right. Come in. I hope you don't think we've been hinting for a free meal, stranger. Shut that door. Light and eat. I'm Thompson McDaniels. You know Bud, too? Why, uh... No, he did his time before Bud got there. And me and him teamed up after I got out. I reckon they're all right if one of them knows Bud. Yeah, if he does know Bud. Grub's on, Cole. Do you happen to be the Cole Younger I've heard Bud talk so much about? I'm Cole Younger, but I don't know whether you heard Bud talking about me or not. It could have been you seen my picture on reward notices. That's the way you fellas feel about us. Maybe we'd better be going. Sit down and finish your grub. That Thompson. Looks like we're going to have more visitors. Any more Bud's friends going to follow you here? No. Who is it? Get back. Jim, you and Bob get in the back room and take your vittles with you. You too. Might as well have you where we can keep an eye on you. Come on. Pick up that plate and cup and get. them two horses outside. They're a couple of strays. I found them down the road a piece, fetched them in and tied them up. It ain't natural for horses to stray by them saddle like that. Besides, you're lying. We're peace officers. And when we leave here, we aim to take a couple of prisoners along with us. Where are you hiding? I ain't hiding nobody. And I found them horses just like I said. Then you can't have any objection to us looking around some. This is my home. And you haven't any legal rights snooping around without a search warrant. This is all the search warrant I need. Now I'll see what's the other side of that door. You fellas don't want to get mixed up in this. Stay back. Much obliged, Mr. McDaniels. I guess we'll be drifting. Hold on, young fella. I want to talk to you two. Where'd you get the money to buy them horses? Where you supposed? Where? Where's it to you anyhow? They were bought with stolen greenbacks. Hold out your hand. Drop them guns. Which one of that drill first, son? Either one, I guess. Why not? You hear them say they were peace officers, didn't you? That doesn't make any difference. Mr. McDaniels took us in unsuspecting. And being a law-abiding citizen, we don't want to have him mixed up in any murder. I'll get started. You better take these with you. You might need them sometime. I hope it works. I'll get out of here before I lose my self-control. I'll give you an idea what's going to happen to you the next time we meet you. I'm sorry about this. If I hadn't thought we'd shaken them off our trails, we'd never come near here. Well, this ain't no time for excusing yourself. We all got to get saddled and skin out of here before they come back to the posse. Gentlemen, are you the Captain Worthington? I presume so. At least I know of no namesake. Is there a Miss Whittaker stopping here? Yes, sir. Room two upstairs. Oh, here's Miss Whittaker. Oh, hello. This is very fortunate. 
Uh, it's extremely important that I get in touch with your grandfather, Mr. Rogers, at once. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know where they are. Please, how can I help you get your money back if you don't tell me? Uh... It isn't money I'm worrying about. They left me here almost a week ago, and I haven't seen them since. Where did they go? I don't know, except they thought they might find Jesse James. I felt sure I'd see them in a day or two, but... He wants us to drift in the Sand Valley tomorrow. Him and Frank will be there ahead of us. We're taking big chances going back there as soon as this. That's what I tried to tell Jesse, but he's so mad on account of Buster and his mother that he don't care. What he wants to do is smoke this bank detective out into the open. Figures the best way to do that is draw some money out of the Sand Valley Bank. Cooks that fell up into this neck of the woods. What did he want him up here for? Well, you're supposed to pay him off for starting that raid on his stepfather's house. Shucks, he didn't have nothing to do with starting that raid. All he done was... How do you know he didn't? What that fella told us doesn't prove anything. What fella? The fella that sold us those two horses we were riding. What'd he tell you? Well, he claimed the investigation proved that that bank detective didn't have a thing to do with starting that raid. Well, who did then? Well, near as I can figure out, is one of the fellas hooked up at the railroad. You counting on me to help you with that raid, Cole? Maybe so. Why? It's going to look suspicious if we don't start drifting into town kind of gradual, and I thought maybe me and one or two of the other boys could start moseying in tonight. Yeah. Well, in the morning it'll be soon enough. You and your partner better bunk alongside me and McDaniels tonight. And that way the four of us can get up together for a bright and early start. Come along and fetch your blankets. Good morning, Miss Whitaker. Any news of your grandfather? No, not yet. Well, it's possible that he and Rogers succeeded in catching up with James, and James became suspicious. And then the wrong party took the other in custody. You must have some idea where they expected to find him. Oh, they thought he was hiding out somewhere in the vicinity. So they left me here while they went to investigate. That's all I can tell you. If Rogers suspected that James was being around here, he had a very good reason for thinking so. I realize that now. The danger must have been greater than he wanted me to know. That's why he didn't tell me everything. He thought I might get frightened and... You're putting on a great act, young lady, but you haven't fooled me a bit. Please, not so loud. Whether you know it or not, I can take measures to make you tell the truth. All your make-believe anxiety doesn't mean a thing to me, so you might as well start talking right... Excuse me, stranger, but where I come from, men don't talk to their women folks such like. Thank you kindly, but I think I'll be able to take care of myself. His bark is much worse than his bite. Beg your pardon, ma'am. <coughs> Having met your bodyguard before, I might have known my help wouldn't be needed. Who is this man? Do you know him? Just an acquaintance I met on the train. Thank you, ma'am. Well, possibly I did lose my temper, and possibly you were telling the truth. But in that case, your grandfather is unquestionably being detained by Jesse James. I don't think so, necessarily. What would you do, Captain, if you saw Jesse James? There's only one thing to do. Shoot first and ask questions afterwards. But now about your grandfather and Rogers. I think they'll probably be able to take care of themselves also. Right ahead and keep an eye on them two jailbirds. I don't trust them too much. Shad's calling us. We better split up while I figure a way to warn the marshal. Where can I find the marshal? In his office, likely. Just around the corner, after the pump, on the right side of the street. Thank you. What do you want the marshal for? Jesse James is in town. I think there's going to be a robbery. 
Captain Worthington! Captain Worthington! Captain Worthington! Looks like you're gonna have to buck me off, Craig. Are you all right? I'm all right. I did it on purpose. I had to talk to you. You've got to get to the bank and tell them to look out for a holdup. to the river. We're going over the ridge. Hey! You got an arm of your own to look out for. Ah, uh, shucks. Mine is a clean wound. Let them work there. Patched it up slick. Come on in, boys. Serelda. Serelda, where are you? Serelda. Zerelda. Darling, what's happened? I took sick about three days ago. Then the baby started ailing. Oh. It's nothing. It's just a scratch. Jesse, you have... No, no. The thing we've got to think about is getting you and the young and well. 
Maybe the fellow that fixed up my hand. He doesn't set himself up to be a doctor, but he sure did a good job on me. When I was a kid, there wasn't any docking calling distance, and Mom had to get by the best way she could. That wasn't so bad, was it? It's all right. It was good. Must be hard on women folks when they're men get in serious trouble, especially when they're sick. Yeah, I guess it is. Just about got us all cured up, Leavenworth. Yep. Guess you'll be skinned out pretty soon, huh? Maybe you and Frank will be going along with me. Jesse and me have been talking it over. We think keeping company with us is taking too much of a risk. Likewise, we figured that maybe you'd like to settle back east somewhere and learn the doctrine trade from the ground up. You got a knack for it. And we're figuring on staking you as much as we're able. See how much we got saved up, Jesse. It's a hold up. Come over here. See how much is in it, Gabby. Shucks, you can't be over two or three thousand dollars. What'd you do with the rest of it, Jesse? You're Rogers, aren't you? Where's the rest of that money? The railway to take it that blows up people's homes. I'm working for the Bankers Association. You're under arrest for the robbery of the White Bank and the murder of its porter. If it means anything to you, I didn't have anything to do with that explosion. If it means anything to you, that's all the money there is. We didn't have anything to do with the robbery of that bank. There's a lot of robbers here and there trading on Frank's in my name. Well, maybe that'll explain how you couldn't blow the safe to pieces, gather up all the money and get away as fast as they claim you did. It almost seems like the money must have been taken before the safe was blasted. Like the folks that belonged to the bank. Come on, Gabby, I guess we're on the wrong track. Wait a minute. Why'd you do that? Why'd you give me the chance to shoot you in the back? To prove to myself you're not the kind that would shoot an unarmed bank porter. I think I know who robbed that bank. Well, I guess we'll get going. Jesse, unless you give me a reason, I won't be back. What did I do with that? Leave it. Don't forget the baby's milk. I won't, Leavenworth. If anyone questions your authority, all you got to do is show them that badge. All right, sir, next applicant. All right, you. Can you furnish your own horse and equipment? Yes, sir. Have you ever been a peace officer? Yes, sir. I've been deputized occasional. Do you know the purpose we're employing you for? To go hunting the James boys, ain't it? Yes, and their confederates, particularly Rogers and Whitaker. Sign the book. I told you, Captain, my grandfather had nothing to do with trying to rob that bank, nor Roy Rogers either. They tried to warn the marshal, then... I'm sorry, Miss Whitaker, but I'm very busy. Here you are. Next, Finn. Oh. The posse downstairs getting ready to go out and look for you. You can't stay well, I here. I don't aim to. I just dropped in to tell you to pack your duds and sneak out cautious. Roy and me will be waiting down the east road a piece. This is where we got to leave you, Mary. You understand what you're supposed to do as soon as you get to Munich, don't you? Yes, I understand, all right. But are you sure... Now, don't start worrying about me and Roy. I got everything all figured out. The sheriff wants to see you right away, Mr. Wyatt. The sheriff? Where is he? What does he want? He's right outside. The Whitaker girl's with him. I don't know what he wants, but he says it's a matter of life and death. 
showing me. Let's say it. Shut up. Help me put these books in there. Get that scared look off your face. Sam, do you and Bob keep yourself armed? Why, we... Uh, what difference does it make? If you don't, you'd better. Jesse James is gunning for you. Jesse James after Bob and me? Why? You've got a crazy idea that you set the officers on to blow up his stepdaddy's place. Why, that's ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. That's what her grandpappy tried to tell him. But it wasn't any use. So he got word to her to come to me. Your grandfather? How does he know? He, uh, he heard them talking. Him and this here Rogers joined up the James gang, like Worthington claimed. But there's only make-believe. Just until they find out where they've hidden the money they took from your bank. Of course, I'll be on the lookout, but not have no notion what Jesse looks like. I thought you might need a little protection. Just in case he gets by me. Why, he wouldn't be on that train, Sam. It's come the wrong way. Yep, number seven, right on the dot. Gets here at noon. Lights off to Kansas City after a half hour for lunch. Latest St. Louis papers, folks. France plans building canal across the Isthmus of Panama. Hot off the press, folks. Latest news about Jesse James here. Hey, mister, I'll have one. Yes, there you are, mister. Who's next? Right over here. Yes, ma'am. Please, I'll take one. Yes, sir. Thank you. and chain. Get out your wallet. Put them in that bag and close it up. Train crew's coming back. South Park and see what attention Worthington paid to that wire we faked. I hope this Henley, whoever he is, hasn't led us on a wild goose chase. Anyway, this must be the place he meant. And it's still Friday afternoon. Could that be them now? Come on, we've got to get close enough to see. Sheriff? Near as I can figure. Have them bring along their passbooks? Yep, I uh, sure did. 
All right, folks, I think I've got just about all the money that was taken in the robbery. So if you'll get your books ready, we'll kind of check up. You really mean it? Well, mine's 800. Here's my book. This is a fine thing you've done, Rogers. It's going to mean a lot to Munis. Where's Rogers? Right here. You're under arrest. What for? Aiding and abetting Jesse James in an attempted bank robbery. The only robbery I had anything to do with was a railroad car five or six hours ago. Right here's the loot. I took it from Sam and Bob White. Yeah. Looks like they robbed their own bank and then tried to blame it on Jesse James. Well, uh, did you... Have you got him in jail? Nope. The only thing I bothered about was this money. That's right, Wellington. Come on, man. We'll track down the wire. Save yourself the trouble, Captain. I got a telegraph message saying there's arrested in Kansas City as they stepped off the train. I'd like to ride through the Echo Mountain. The Echo makes my dream come true. I say I love you. It says I love you. And I imagine I ride with you. I long for you, dear, from early morning. Until the stars began to shine So I'll keep riding to Echo Mountain Until the moment you're real 